divided by s s plus b over m, right? Might be Might be. Because we tried to get s over plus a again, right? And the a has to be up here as well. So, and it will be all times 1 over b, right? This is because we have to do the begin, and the 1 over m was already known here. Okay? So if we back transform this now, we will have v of t equals v at the time 0 times e to the minus at, right? Uh, so e to the minus, and this is basically 1 over tau, or you, you, we can also do b over m times t. And actually, the time constant, oops, that's the time constant. Uh, and actually, that's sorry, 1 over tau. So we can also say this is, to make it a little shorter, over tall plus fa at time zero times one minus e to the minus t over tall divided by b. Make sense? in the current control in your homework, you will also see a very similar uh, uh, equation and it should make sense for you because you probably did this during your studies once to see the loading uh, the, when you have a constant voltage on, a, on an inductor or a constant current on a, on a capacitor you will always see these equations somewhere in there, right? Where the T and the tau is in there? Yes. So this should already look like something correct for you. You should be like, oh that makes sense. If I load something with a constant uh, to on uh, something that is loading up right here. I load the energy basically to the math and into the mass, right? Whereas in the inductor, I would uh, put a constant voltage into an inductor so that gets integrated, so I have no energy in my current. And this loading curve should look like e to the minus t over at all, right? So this should look already like something you've seen before. So it also makes a lot of physical sense, which is good. If you look at your math and you feel like, well, this makes sense. Also here, right, we talk about virtual zero reference and this B makes sense now, actually draws the system back to zero. This should be something that we, that we uh, have a feeling for, that we experience in real life and it makes physical sense. It's always good if our math feels like it should be correct.
And now we try to generalize this. We basically just do the generalization. We can do this between 0 and t, but technically we can also say that t is any k times t. Okay? So that means the look exactly at this equation it has to be k times t and what and what b now? B of k minus one k minus one times t, right? And this loading curve doesn't change. Like it doesn't matter if this is between uh, zero and t or k and t and k minus t. This the length of this is still big t, right? So also this is not k times t. It's between these two. So this is v of z times z to the minus 1, right? Yeah. It's just a light. <coughs> and the same goes here. Now we technically had step number 10 that we leave out here. It would be to find the cross couple transfer function. We don't have cross couple uh, terms really. So we now get to the first order system, step 10. And that would be to get the single input and single output transfer function. And that's very easy, right? We just we have this now, we just have to put out these terms and we can easily derive V of Z over F A of Z, which we call the new system dynamics of Z. And it will be 1 minus E to the minus T over tau. <coughs> and 
And this is now our transfer function that we can use. This is our model for our system, and we can put eigenvalues where we want to, we can do controls with this because now we know how it behaves. That's our new system dynamics. Okay? And it doesn't look at all like a Tustin looks, right? It doesn't look at all like a rectangular or forward oil looks. Absolutely different. Funny enough, if you do T just small enough, they seem like the same. But if you don't want just infinitely fast sampling, and you can always switch that fast or Right? That you always have physical limits. Can also be a bad idea really in respect to your toss where you put your angulars and you send them too fast. So now I want to show you the, the fast way to do this. And and the idea of the fast one is This this one that our latch basically looks like a step plus or or minus actually minus the same step one time later, right? <coughs> Because it holds it only for one period, right? So the latch really does this with your input, and then with the next one it again does this. Because it only holds it for one period. It's an impulse signal. Sorry? It's an impulse signal. And it's not an impulse. An impulse is instantaneously, infinitely short. But in this great time? Also not. It's just a step positive, and one time later a step ne negative. So this actually is a one and a one where we we did this we did this like this I don't know if you uh, I think like this I don't want to write this incorrectly but this looks like a one over s times one that's this one and I subtract the same signal delay to the one right that's what my latch is. And the overall thing would be this times my GP of this. Yeah. Okay? So actually what I also can do, I can say my new system dynamics <coughs> is the Z domain of this whole thing. 1 over S, 1 minus E to the minus S T times G P of S. Okay? And this actually looks also the same as the Z domain or the Z, the Z transformation of GP of S over S minus the Z transformation of GP of S over S times e to the minus ST. And what do you think this should look like in the end? This and this will be the same, but one one yeah, delay. So it's one minus e to the minus one times the z transformation of GP over S.
We used to call this the cookbook method. <coughs> the fast way to get there. It really hides a lot of the information between the map because in, this, in the steps, if it's a little bit more complicated, you can in between cross salt and do all of that. This just hides it really quick and then you might miss something. But it also, you can also get there with parsing and other uh, tricks. So it's good to know this and for, expect, especially in the first order system, you derive very quickly at your new system dynamics. Now let's try it and see if we get the same as up here because otherwise it seems to be not correct. So let's do this real quick. We know that our GP of S equals 1 over MS plus B, right? <coughs> so um, we again are going to use, so we try to get a first one from that. So we try again to use A over S. S plus A, and then the Z domain, this will be Z times 1 minus E to the minus AT over Z minus 1 times Z minus E AT. You can find this also in tables, okay? So we will use this. But I still need to times b, so that's, that I don't change the math, I have to do 1 over b, right? And so we now can do this. And for this, oh, sorry, yeah. no, you're right. This is s plus b over m, or Yeah, sorry. And this equals 1 minus c to the minus 1 times 1 over b times z 1 minus e to the minus and a again is 1 over top, right? We have the same here as before, so it will be t over top. Down here as well. 
because we don't want z's, we really want everything in z to the minus one format, because we can't look into the future, we can only delay, we can only, right? So we never use z's. Sometimes the math is nicer, I can see already the poles at one, whereas one minus e to the minus one is not as easy to see. But uh, at the end, we want to get to the e to the minus one format. So, and this will be basically, so one of this drops out and goes e to the minus one, and this will be then one minus z to the minus one. This will be one minus this thing minus z to the minus one, right? And then we'll see that this cancels with this. And this should awfully closely look like this. And by close, I mean the exact same. Okay? So it should derive to uh, wind up be the exact same as our long tedious version. But all it is, is really, we solve the differential <coughs> equation and we have a difference function and from the difference function we can get a z-transform. Start with the eye control. First of all, what is a so there's many structures in discrete time to build the eye control. It contains really one PFI, right? Uh, but I also said there's no integration model, right? So what do we do for the integration? There's many, many different ways. You can do TUS, you can do forward oil. It doesn't really matter which one you're using. It's more about what it does. API control, both in continuous and discrete, introduces a zero and a pole, right? Yeah. And um, the pole in continuous domain is at the origin, right? 1 over s is in the origin. Where's the origin on the, in the z domain? The, the continuous origin in the z domain. This is e to the minus st, right? S is now 0, so e to the 0 t is 1, one, one. one right? <laughs> so the pi control will basically have a 0, and you can choose the 0, you will see how, and it has a pole at 1. That's what it does. And whatever format of pi you're using, you have to get it back to this format so you know what you're doing. And to get into the format that we prefer, it's 1 minus t is equal to minus 1. And this is our 0, right? 1 minus t is equal to minus 1. So you have to get here. So again, there's a lot of different ways to get there. A very common one is time weighted accumulation. So you have your kp, and up here you have uh, your ki. And then you use time weighted accumulation, 
which is t over 1 minus e to the minus 1. That's one way to build it. Again, you can use Tustin, you can use anything here, but I'll show you for this example. In any case, you need to know what you're doing here. So if I write this now as a transfer function, I'll just try to get it to that format. This is kp plus kit over 1 minus c to the minus 1. So I'll try not to get this down here, right? So this will be kp 1 minus c to the minus 1 plus kit over 1 minus c to the minus 1. So I already have this here, but this is not quite there yet. So I want 1 here, so I have to basically see what's d to the minus 1, that would be only that, or that's kp, sorry. So I will try to get everything out that's not d to the minus 1, which is this plus this. So I'll get kp plus ki times t out of that. And so <coughs> everything of 1 would now wind up, or it, that has no z, z in it, will be now 1. And the other one would be kp over this, right? Plus kp over kp plus <coughs> ki t times z to the minus 1. So that means this is my k, and this is my 0. So if you use this format, you got to know that your 0 that you're placing is at kp over kp plus kit, and the gain you're introducing is kp plus kit. Okay? Also, you can do some algebra to turn this around or later on, because we will use these now to calculate what they should be, and to get them back, uh, we'll use these two equations. You can, you can put them in many different ways. This is one way to do it. It's k over 2 minus dc, and ki equals k minus kp over t. Okay, so I can, if I get k and dc, I can calculate my kp, and later on with this I can get my ki. This is just for later on, because now we use this format, and later on we substitute it back. But this, this is just the nicer way for the math. Because you want to know where your zeros and poles are. So this really helps. Again, in continuous domain, you don't have to do all this. But in discrete, you really have to. Okay. So now we know how our control structure should look like and what it actually does. So how do we choose now our gains for our k and our zero? <coughs> and again, the easiest way here, discrete math, is really to do zero pole placement. And then you can increase the gain and see where they're going. That's usually what the root locus plot shows you in MATLAB. Yeah. So we use the open loop first to understand what our options are. 
And the open loop now would be uh, our new system dynamics, right? And our controller. So I keep the controller now in the format that really helps us. And the new system dynamics are here. So depending on how close you get the zero to that eigenvalue, the smaller this uh, circle becomes, right? So there are instances where this can be a good idea, there are some where it's not a good idea. Right? If this for instance seems like, oh here, up here, they're probably not as well done, then they get back here, then they're on the left plane. Left plane is not really good, we haven't talked about this just yet, but here forced oscillation occurs. That's something that you don't have a continuous domain. Uh, so you don't really want to be here. It works, but it's not really nice properties. And then, um, yes, it can be a bad idea. But another example would be if they're, they're really close to one another and you put the zero here, 
they might go here and here, right? And maybe that is a good idea. And you have one fast one here and one slower there. That seems like the PI control we built for before. That's actually what we sort of did in the continuous domain. We chose two eigenvalues to be somewhere. Or we have the green one. There also, this one moves now into this, and this one just keeps moving here. This actually is closer to what the one that we did in continuous. Um, because we didn't get eigenvalues move away from the, uh, from the red axis. So this is really what we did in continuous domain. The, or the orange one can be similar-ish, and then there's this whole zero cancellation. All of these can wind up to a control that works well. But you've got to know where the poles are, and you have these two design issues, or these three, sorry, of the pole of the zero first. 